Josh Harper, my former student, he just graduated with first class honors. Um, so he's becoming a teacher very soon. So he started his postgrad course this month. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how was Dundee to you? As you know, I'm a Dundonian. So my journey wasn't very far, uh, but along the metaphorical journey uh, we went on, there were so many things. There, there's so many steps, so many stages. And ultimately it started with, um, I guess, a, a classroom experience in my high school. Uh, I sat in a modern studies classroom. I had fantastic teachers. And I knew from about the age of 11, I wanted to teach. And related to that, I knew I had to go to university. So there was no other choice for me. I had to go. And from that age, I set about doing lots of things that would help me get there. Lots of extracurricular activities, clubs, voluntary opportunities, uh, some of them education related, some of them not. And uh, so I never really left the classroom. Uh, and even when I did, I was always involved in education or volunteering in some way. And then when I wasn't, I was off to watch my football team, Dundee United at Tannadice. And if I wasn't doing that, I was also working. So it's been it's been a long journey. There's lots of steps. And I, I definitely started in my modern studies classroom. And I guess it's quite fitting that that's where I'll be heading back very soon, back to the classrooms where it all began. Um, but yeah, I started at Dundee, uh, wow, September 2017. That seems like <laughs> seems like quite a while ago now, um, and yeah, I, I remember it started. I've always been quite open about this. It was a it was a difficult start. Um, I, I I struggled in the first few weeks to to find my feet, and it was actually Martin uh, who helped uh, in that initial phase. Helped me just to just to calm me down a bit and say, you know. Just, just take time to actually process the fact you're here. I think there was always for me that quite a heavy weight oh. that I knew I had to make good on this experience yeah. because yeah. without it, I couldn't teach. And, yeah. and I guess when you know for so long what you want to do and you know how to get there and you're finally in a position where you're, you're marching towards that goal in a more yeah. clear way... Um, I guess it, it became quite difficult mentally at the beginning. It was quite difficult. And then I think it was like possibly you, Abdul, or possibly you that said something along the lines of just try and enjoy, you know, just try and enjoy this place that you're, you're in and realize the gift that you've been given, you know, and the gift you've given yourself by coming here. Uh, mm. And I guess it was, as the weeks went on and the weeks, as you know, in university, weeks quickly become years. You know, one minute it's week one and then before long you're submitting essays and asking for yeah. marks back. And we had exams as well. Uh, yeah. They seemed like a, a far cry from what we know, uh, what we've known in the last couple of years, but we had exams as well. So there was always something to kind of keep your, keep your head going and keeping the time uh, moving. Um, but I think there were so many just good bits of advice in those early, mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. weeks, um, especially the support from Martin. And then not long after that, I would have come across you as well. Martin is one of our colleagues. Uh, yeah. like when, whenever the students start their journey in the university, what they get in the very initial stages, they get an academic advisor. Yeah, I should have said. And like Martin was your academic advisor and everyone yeah. will get an academic advisor for four years you are not alone in the very beginning absolutely and I think that it was for me quite ironic and perhaps even paradoxical I was in the city that I'd called home my entire life and yet I felt alone me mm -hmm. I, I, I live with my family um, I have family in the city and I felt alone you know and, and I think it just shows you how mentally challenging an experience like coming to university can be and I say coming to university you know I was in my home city I didn't I had about a half an hour walk to get mm -hmm. to campus on a daily basis maybe you know plus or minus 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, and then I think I, I I just took the advice you know there was lots of advice given you know just try and enjoy yourself try and just 
ease up a bit you know I I was quite I think when I was younger I was quite quite a tense kind of person I was always kind of you know quite tensed up everything was always you know what are we doing why is this happening where are we going everything was all quite tense and I think um definitely that was something I changed yeah. I, I had to become less tense less uptight and yeah. just to try and appreciate the people that I had around me and the situations that were that I was able to be involved in uh and so that was a big change. I think that's probably one of the biggest changes. If you knew me um, perhaps just before university and if you know me now or if you've known me in the last couple of years, you would see that. Um, yeah. Being able to enjoy myself more, um, speaking with a lot more people. Um, but yeah, I think there, there were so many people at the start that, that really pushed me just through that first couple of months, you know, into September, October, November time yeah. um, where it got quite difficult. And then... I, I really started to enjoy it. Uh, really, really started to enjoy it. it. It sounds cliche to say, but it was a kind of light bulb moment. Um, it's hard to pinpoint it to a single event as such, but there was definitely a period of time where it did feel for me like the, the room had changed, the colours were getting brighter, there wasn't as much doom and gloom. And I was going to university with a much more positive outlook. You know, I was going there to learn and to contribute. Once it got to the, the position of coming in to do the honour study, uh, there was always that bit of trepidation, you know, at the start of an academic semester, and you think, can I, have I got another good semester in me? Have I got another good essay in me? I, I went from hating it to loving it, and the, there's one word that explains that, and it's enjoyment. Uh, I just begun to enjoy it, and I managed to build up quite a good network of friends uh, at university, some within my year, some above me, yeah. uh, some even below, you know, managed to build up quite a good network of friends uh, through university. And of course, the staff as well made things so much easier for all of us, because I think we all had a level of appreciation, um, especially with COVID for the situation. And, and everybody, I think, tried to be as understanding as they could. Yeah. And it all helps, you know, it all helps. Those little conversations, those little emails that you get, the little joke that happens during the class, all those things go a long way to help and yeah. just make you feel that a little bit more comfortable. Uh, or for some people, a lot. You know, I, I thrived on that. I loved getting a, a, a little joke or um, a little story. You know, Dan would just pick, a, pick up on me because I would like to study islands. So he'd say, OK, you can just do a presentation on islands. You know, we do politics nations every week he'd say okay, <laughs> you can do the end you know the islands belonging to india you can just do something on that um mm. and i did you know that's mm. that's how it was um so, so all those things help mm. so like does it mean like so like the things like that you know it's like flexibility mm. you think mm. flexibility is a big part like coming to the university and then you can choose peak you can change you can move on you can come back. So all kind of, you know, all kind of flexibility is there. Yeah, flexibility is absolutely crucial. Um, I think flexibility in, in terms of the choice within the, the modules that we offer, you know, flexibility is probably the biggest buzzword there is for university experience. You need to be flexible because everything in your life's a balancing act. You know, mm -hmm. every single one of my friends, uh, with the exception of one, had a job while we were at university. Uh, so, you know, you had to fit in mm. some crazy schedules. And so flexibility is absolutely crucial. And also that in the communication bit as well. So always get in touch with your tutor, with your lecturer. Yeah. These people yeah. are important. So like also be brave as well. I think like that's yeah. my buzzword for this dream. Be brave. <laughs> <laughs> Fire an email, you know, just like, you know, just yeah. get in touch. Get in touch. I don't, think... don't feel, you know, like, I mean, oh my God, I cannot do it. Or, you know, uh, he's a professor or, University is like, you know, level playing field. I mean, so, I mean, everyone is, I think, valued, seriously valued, you know. Mm. And I think that, that goes back, I mean, what we said about the community, that that's really important. I think, you know, as long as you treat everybody with the respect and the dignity and mm. as long as you voice your question <laughs> in, a, in a collegiate way, then, you know, there's, all, there's, no, there's no reason to not ask the questions. Um, I benefited from that a lot, you know, just quick questions, you know, even clarifications on yeah. uh, essay questions or, yeah. you know, even if there's something you've been reading and you think mm, this just isn't quite 
matching up or there's something that isn't quite there mm-hmm. you know and obviously it's a bit more difficult in the covid situation because office hours were really good for that sort of thing and mm-hmm. um, you could say okay why not just pop by or you know but then absolutely i think being brave and and just um taking a lot of responsibility for what you do as well mm-hmm. matters and and it always helps you know if you leave something until the very last minute and you're scrambling to get help people are going to say well you know what do you want us to do you've got one day to submit this or two days to submit this and you're asking me a very particular question about something you know mm. what do we do um but help is always there either by you know lecturers or admin uh, support or indeed to the people around you as well you know i think sometimes at university it can be a taboo thing to discuss your work or you know discuss your own opinions on something it can be quite a taboo thing you know oh, we don't do that you know we don't speak to each other about that or um you know plagiarism you know we don't we don't talk about that here but i think it's really important it's how you learn it's how you learn and it's how the real world works uh, you know you don't just keep things to yourself and then mm-hmm. Mm. oh well I you know this is my thing I I think only this and that's it you know dialogue is formed through surprise surprise dialogue you need to speak in order to get any sort of response um so communication is vital yeah absolutely and being brave can you just walk us through like the first year second year third year fourth year yeah what it takes to you know to become a good politics student in first year the best thing to do is make mistakes best thing absolutely the best thing to do is make mistakes um try things out try and find a routine also speak to people you should spend quite a lot and maybe some lecturer will say don't listen to this guy you know spend a lot of your time trying to meet people speak with people those relationships are crucial going forward they're so important and i learned that through the hard way i learned that through not forging those relationships immediately um, and meeting people more in second year than in first year so really, I think you, you have to kind of go out of your social comfort zone a wee bit and, and just try and meet people. That's so important, uh, meeting people and also trying to get to know the people who are on your course because uh, they are the people who will help you uh, and, and who you can share the common issues with. So speaking, speaking and speaking and making mistakes. That's, that's year one, in my opinion. I think the work's important, but I, for me, looking back, first year was good for being able to make mistakes and to try things out that's why in Scotland we have four years not three so you've got that extra year learn how to write learn how to read make mistakes make friends that's year one year one is that that's that's it um year two is make slightly less mistakes and meet slightly less people uh but very similar you know year one and year two I didn't notice much difference um I would say in addition to year one, though, look ahead, try and get an idea of where you're going, because once you're in the second year, third year's around the corner. So try and think about the modules you've taken in first year, the modules you're currently enrolled in for second year and where they might be leading for third and fourth year. Um, Because what you don't want to do is pick a complete random mess of subjects in first year and other random mess of subjects in second year or modules. Uh, and then when you hit third year, go, I'm not really too yeah. sure kind of where I'm going with this. And I'll just take anything because I'll come on to third year. Uh, but second year, I think, is that last chance you've got to try and just yeah. find your feet and find a path that you think's right for you. So, you know, in first and second year, I did film, history and the politics modules. So at each point, there was three plans there. There was three yeah. routes I could have taken. Um, yeah. And I think... You know, that's something that the advisors of studies always encourage you to do is to have a backup route just in case, because you might get bored. You might just think, actually, do you know what? Maybe I want to do history instead of politics, politics instead of history, English instead of history, blah, blah, blah. So that's what's good about doing the ME honours programme at Dundee, because you've got that flexibility to choose and to make mistakes. So first and second year, much the same. Third year, third year is without saying everyone always goes to say the same thing it is the year where it starts to bite you know you do need to kind of minimize the mistakes (laughs) um 
keep the socialization you know keep the socializing there but just be mindful that the work does start to ramp up a little bit mm. um and i think you have to be prepared to talk you know that's so important don't i think any advice i would give to anyone coming on to study politics is be prepared to share your thoughts mm. um studying politics as most lecturers will make clear when you're in the rooms or virtual rooms it's a safe space you need to just with you know obviously some opinions can be can be a bit far flung but you need to share what you think uh, and I, that's the absolute prerequisite of studying politics you need to be able to share those opinions and if they're based on reading or based on experience then then bring them you know i think they're so important um, but you can see the difference in third year. It goes from kind of socialising. Now we're talking more mm -hmm. about tutorials, seminars, being prepared, speaking. Do you think like third year, suddenly you become adult? Well, it's funny because everyone says you're the old one now. <laughs> you know, everyone kind of, because of course you've got the first years way below you, then the second yeah. years and then the third years and there's only one level above you. <laughs> so... Everybody does kind of say, oh, you're the old one now. Um, yeah. So I think by third year, you, I, I agree, you do become a bit more adult. People now get, I think you are thinking of your future, what yes. you want to be. Yeah, a lot more, certainly from the conversations I had with people, they're beginning to, you're beginning to hear things like internships. Mm. You're beginning to hear things like master's courses. You're beginning to hear things like, I pay X amount of thousands of pounds for this course. You know, you hear a lot more of that language. Mm. Uh, whereas in first and second year, it's more, how cheap can I get a drink? Uh, you know, where's the best place for a night out? You know, and, and I don't drink or do nights out. So <laughs> I'm not the best person to ask. I think that's the main difference. You're right. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It is that bit more adult, bit more responsibility is on you. Uh and I think ultimately the lecturers, the, the good side to that is the lecturers treat you more individually. Mm -hmm. So they try and make more of an effort to get to know just through the, the time period you've been on the course. The, you know, the, the, the classes get smaller as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a wee bit more uh, kind of knowledge gaining going on. There's a bit more, oh, you know, who are you? I, I, I kind of know you. There's, mm -hmm. You're in rooms with people that look very familiar now. Mm. Um, and you've seen the same faces for about three years so mm. you know and that makes all the sense you know I said the socializing kind of comes down by third year but that's because everybody knows each other you know you know mm. the person sat in front of you you know the person sat behind you you know Diane you know Abdullah you know all the people you know everybody yeah. um, you know the support staff mm. you know who works in the student funding unit you know you know all these people so it's a lot more easier for you to signpost uh, third year you do feel it. It is a jump, but I don't think it's one that no one uh, cannot do. I think if you if you make it to third year, there's a reason you're there. Mm -hmm. uh, Interrupt one more thing here. So, yeah, like for sure. third year, do you think like students need to be a bit of you know preempting things that you know the subject area they really want to focus? So you know because the choosing subject area is important here now, because now you're thinking of your future and the things you want to do, you know like you know, like more narrow down, more focused yeah. area you want to, you know, participate also maximize your, you know, gain from those like subject area. So for yeah. example, if you are interested in the human rights, so you will you will choose subjects, you know, in that yeah. So there's that's a bit of research involved there. Especially especially second year. Depending on the modules and depending on the structure of your course, I think first year you can get away with let's just go for that let's just mm. go for this mm. and let's see where let's see where i go from there mm. i think in second year you do need to you do need to have your thinking cap on a little bit more and, and actually try and think ahead and say well look if i take this african history module where is that where am i going with that mm. if i take this ir module where am i going with that um and and what can i do with it and I, I don't mean that in a kind of transactional sense necessarily. I don't mean yeah. that in a, you know, I, I believe in education for education's sake. Yeah. And I think yeah. education is its own goal and it's set in itself. It doesn't yeah. need to yeah. be attached to anything. Yeah. But I do think, especially now, I think especially now and with sometimes slightly narrower paths when you get out of um, sub-honours, I think you do need to be looking 
a bit more carefully at where you might want to go. Not necessarily where you see yourself being, yeah. but just where you might want to go. Yeah. Um, so, like, I started to take things that orientated around, like, nationalism mm. uh, and or nations and states. Mm. Um, also, your kind of stuff, you know, IR, um, Middle East, you know, I had the avenues to get into all of these mm. things. Mm. So... Mm. I think you just need to either pick a very wide range of subjects, which is kind of what I did. I, I had quite a wide berth of subjects, modules, mm -hmm. or you can you can try and focus quite specifically on, like you said, human rights is always quite a popular one. A lot of people yeah. think I want to go there. I think with your situation, because you want to be a teacher, so yeah. I, think, I think you needed some kind of broader understanding about politics. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Global and that's why, that's why I did history as well until mm -hmm. third year. I did history for first and second year. First year is 3-3-6. Three, 3-3, three, three, three. yeah, that's right. 3-3 three, three split, or 6 split, 3-3, three, three. and then, yeah, 4, four when you hit honours. Um, so, yeah, I always, always had history there. Even the film modules that I took were orientated around a kind yeah. of historical arc. Mm -hmm. So they were looking at the integration of the history and the film. So mm -hmm. what is the history telling us about the context mm -hmm. here? Um, or what is the context surrounding the film? You know, there's always a historical mm -hmm. context there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, there was always a, an understanding of how the world worked through the modules I was taking. And that was really the only focus I had in my head was how can I get as wide a knowledge base as possible yeah. mm -hmm. um, through the subject choice that I have, you know, because you don't have unlimited choice. Mm -hmm. So you do have to be quite, quite careful and quite strategic about where you might want to go mm. and how you can get there with the modules you've got. Yeah. Uh, for me, like you said, I wanted to teach, but also I wanted to come for the knowledge as well. Yep. So yep. you need to, the way I thought to do that was pick a wide range of subjects as I can. Um, and that meant that when I did get to honours, I could take pretty much anything I wanted mm. because I had some background knowledge in most mm. of these things. Mm. Um, that are available so mm. yeah so fourth year that that was that was where it got quite different for me that was very very special as focused mm. um well it got quite particular mm. because this is the time fourth year is basically you know test yourself this is the biggest challenge yeah. now yeah. so if you pick like things like writing a dissertation it's a long paper you need yeah. sustained commitment there yeah and also, yep. you know, it weighs quite a lot. That means, I mean, yep. you, you have to do well here. Yeah. And if you do we, well, it bring lots of good things for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, fourth year was, putting COVID to the side, fourth year was, oh, probably my favorite year. Mm. Because I have never learned so much about myself, about what I can do, about the world about particular things. So I did my dissertation on Shetland. Mm. Shetland, I've been twice, been twice to Shetland. Um, I managed to get primary data from mm. Shetlanders. Uh, there was so much done. I interviewed politicians from Shetland. Mm. Um, so much done. And when you look back at how busy and also how short a university year is, mm. and sometimes I kind of question myself you know how how did I manage that because you're also doing modules on top of your dissertation as well mm -hmm. so I did your module on Middle East politics which is definitely one of my favorite uh, not being biased learned that was probably the module yeah one top one or top two in terms of how much I learned because uh, the Middle East is a, uh, an area of the world I've wanted to know about but I, I struggled to find a, an entry point because there's so much history, mm. there's so much uh, contemporary, so many contemporary issues. That Middle East is its own place in so many ways, and it's quite hard to just get a get a point to come in at um, to study. And certainly, when you try and look at Middle East politics, you really need to know Middle Eastern history. So mm. those things are intertwined, as they are for most countries and most uh, most regions of the world, but especially in the case of the Middle East. So. Yeah, fantastic module. I learned so much. Uh, and I know many people who did that module feel the same way. Uh, really, really eye-opening and really thorough module. Um, but fourth year was 
a whirlwind, very, very quick year. Um, mm. But also, I think, as you said, the, the commitment that comes through writing a dissertation, the skills you, you gain from that is mm. unparalleled. You won't have an opportunity to develop these mm. sorts of skills unless you do master's or whatever. Mm. Um, Coming to the university, if you know how it works, it's not a school. It's not like, you know, any other institute. This is like something very special. That's why I told my students, you know, coming to the university is a gift. It's a special gift. Mm. This this will make you think yeah. you want to be. I think it's it's so true because even even just now I know that people can become obsessed with grades and with um in particular with marking schemes. Mm. You know, so if, if you have a we at Dundee, we have a 23 point grading system. Mm. So you know, a 23 is hundred percent, you've absolutely kicked out of the park you, you've done the best work possible um and obviously the opposite of that is a zero you know you've you've, you've not done anything basically not submitted anything but people have this tendency to just become so obsessed on okay well 21 22 23 20 whatever and it's interesting i always say this to people um during university i never cared about the grade i got mm. I never did. I never let it bother me. Mm, mm. Now, fortunately, the grades I got most of the way through were A's. Mm. But I, I never, it, it was never the thing. Because you see, I could have become complacent. Yep. I could have just become so fixed on, I need to get A1 every time. Mm. I never did. I got I got a couple of A1s yep. across yep. the time. But yep. You couldn't get it every time. Yep. You, can't, you can't let that drive mm. you while you're there. You can't let that be while you're there. Um, you have to just, I mean, especially with something like a dissertation, you'll drive yourself mad trying to perfect mm. that or, you know, meet some scheme. Mm. You just have to focus on, you know, what is it you're doing? Are you hitting the key sort of points that you want to get across? And are your research methods sound? Are the resources you're using sound? Are they, are they credible? Mm. Um, those are far more important things to focus on than some... I dare say imaginary marking scheme. I don't think these in-depth marking schemes really exist. Uh, I think it is just a, quite a holistic marking scheme we yep. use. It's just mm. look at the thing as a whole. You know, mm. is it well written? Are the sources there? Uh, is the argument good? Mm. What, how original is the argument? Are the mm. conclusions based on what's been mm. said? Mm. Think about those things. You know, don't think about you know. I need to get six key points and you know i need to get 500 sources you know don't think about that especially with a dissertation because you could be doing something so particular like yeah. me you yeah. know the number of sources is almost irrelevant because i need to get the right sources not 500 sources i need to get the right yeah. amount yeah. Um, yeah. and i need to get the right type of sources so yeah. you know I think that's that's something that frustrates me about the mm. way people perceive education as this mm. kind of results-based pursuit. You know, it's like it's not about the processes you go through; it's about the end result that you get. Mm. Um, and I mean, certainly, my own experience, I, I've come an awful long way from the essays of first year and well, dissertation in fourth year. You know, there, there's such a huge jump, but more importantly. It's the skills and the knowledge mm. and the ability to do the research uh, that that you learn along the way. That's what stands me in good stead now for what I'm doing. Mm. Mm. It's, it's those preparatory skills. It's the skills mm. around the critical analysis. It's the skills around being able to navigate a library without just having to go, I'm just so overwhelmed by all of this. Mm. Um, it's being able to communicate with people about ideas that you have. Mm. supervisor friends it's, it's been able to explain things in a way that makes them simple uh th these things all matter it's not you know i got a first class fantastic what an achievement i'm so chuffed mm. but it's actually i learned so much about myself through the course the process. Uh, yeah. and that's invaluable that's that's mm. been you know development growth that's mm. that's been human thank you josh i mean i think you you articulated this last bit, I mean, so well. I mean, I, I don't want to add anything there. You know, this is, I think that's the thing I was looking for because, I mean, this is part of the game, you know, critical thinking, critical analysis, good writing skill, 
and then understanding how it works in the university and then the communication and then you know get on board with those things like flexibility and then becoming brave and and then you know get on your work but also try to enjoy the whole whole like yeah. journey and that's it basically you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you I'll, I'll stop here